Well, good morning, everybody, and Merry Christmas. Thank you for heading out in the cold, and lots of times people have things going on with families on this special day. I have made a commitment to uh, keep our service shorter today. I'm shooting for about 45 minutes. We'll share some music together. We'll share some reflections and then uh, be able to go and be with family and friends and things like that on this, on this special day. But quite frankly, it's, it's good to be here. It's almost, it almost seems antithetical to me to, to not have a worship service on Christmas Day when it's on a Sunday. And a number of churches, about 20 to 30 percent of the churches they say in America are electing not to have a service, um, which yeah, I guess is a little disappointing, but I, I do understand with families and travel and all those kind of things. We're, we're obviously going to be light today because a number of people have celebrations with families and things like that. I've already got a, a uh, text from one of my granddaughters, when are you coming home? <laughs> so, so I know that, that, that feeling here. But we, we come today to not not consider the birth as today, but to consider what God did so many years ago, God with us, that we might be redeemed. And what a joyous occasion to remember, but to also realize that he is coming again. Not as a baby, but as Lord of Lords, the Almighty God. So if you are able, please stand as we open up with a few songs.
a little bit today. We we have some glitch in our normal uh, AV system, and so Joe, as you can see, is in the back here working it from the computer versus our, our normal wave that we could do it. So we'll get through this. It's just another thing that happens. But let's, let's open right now with the scripture reading, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. This is the story that is so often read at homes on Christmas Day. We'll read it together now. It's, In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph went up also from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. That will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly the great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up these things in her and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they were told. Before we, we um, go into the discussion and, and, uh, and, uh, and sing a, a song in between, let's pray. Almighty God, help us to be where you want us to be. Help us, Almighty God, to let all the things of this world just melt for a while, that we might recognize the hope and the faith, and the joy, and the peace that we have in who you are. God with us, the one who provided for us our salvation, 
So, Almighty God, we pray that you'll hide us behind the cross, that we might see you. Watch over us, Lord, and guide us in all that we do today, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't we stay seated while we sing this next song?
Well, I, I promised that um, today was going to be a little bit um, quicker, a little bit um, not as much time on the message, but I, a lot of things that I thought about as I considered those passages that we read that just made me perhaps even more appreciate all that happened that one night, probably around April our time, quite frankly, not December 25th, but I found myself asking questions. For example, was the travel to Bethlehem a step in faith by Joseph and Mary? After all, she was, she was ready to give birth to a baby. She was near that time. Or was it out of fear of Roman rule? The Romans said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go to your town to register. You, you have to, it's like, it's like your, your ability to vote. You have to vote in a specific district. And the census is going to be taking. I want to see how many people I rule. And you will go for fear of persecution or death if you don't obey the Roman rulers. And when I thought about that, because it, you know, lots of times you think, oh, what, how faithful Joseph and Mary were, you know, instead of having the baby where they were in their, their, their town, if you will, in Nazareth, they, they took that hard travel down to Bethlehem, a good distance, by the way. But what I thought is, no matter what, step of faith or fear of human power, God will accomplish his will. It's amazing what will happen when we are opened to allowing God to work in our lives. They might have been grumbling. Mary might have been saying, this is hard, as she perhaps was on a, a beast of burden, be it a donkey or something, and, and being led as the, the, the typical pictures we have of, of Joseph leading her. Perhaps a time she had to walk, because quite frankly, being on, on the animal and going over the rough terrain and things like that probably was jolting to her. But God was going to accomplish what he promised through the prophet Micah. That the baby, the, the Messiah, would be born in Bethlehem. And then there's the, there's the different things, even some of the songs we sing that depict a certain idea of that birth. For instance, it talks about, we see in our, our manger, we see a, a, the idea of a stable. Um, the, the songs say, born in a stable. People talk about being in a barn. Some even talk about, well, the, the stable was, was the place they put the animals was a cave. But you go to the, the time, you go to the archaeology there, and you say, no, that's not what it was like. In fact, the word that is used in the scripture where it says that there was no room for them in the inn, the word that is translated in is most often translated guest room. The word that we talk about, the Samaritan who, who the good Samaritan who took the, the person that was injured to an inn is a different word. And if you go to the archaeology of the houses at the time, you'll find that there was a room that was available for animals when conditions required it. And the, the room that they had was under, in most cases, at least in the archaeology, there might be some differences in how people put their houses together, but in the, the house that we found from that time, the room that the animals would be stored in at times was just below where the master, if you will, the master bedroom would be. Perhaps to get some of the warmth of the animals coming off as well as the smell. <laughs> so it wasn't necessarily that they put them out in some barn, some cave, but rather they put them in the only place available, a place where the animals were too. No place else to put you in, in our home. People are paying us money to stay, but there's no more room there. But, but you can go into where the animals are, and, and they found that manger that they were able to, to put the child, the, the baby, the baby Jesus in. It's an interesting thing to think about. And, and then there is that emphasis in this chapter 2 of Luke that talks about that first announcement, the first announcement to the shepherds. And if you have probably heard and passed sermons from people and maybe read about uh, shepherds were not the privileged class. They were not the ones that everybody said, oh, let's, let's look to the shepherds. Let, let the, ah, the shepherds are my friend. In many ways, they were avoided. Uh, I, I was raised on a farm, 
and uh, you know when you're mucking out stalls and things like that and you're you're with the animals a lot you have a tendency to smell like them <laughs> and so they probably didn't always smell the best and quite frankly they, it's not like they could take a shower every day walking around taking care of the sheep so in many ways they were avoided oftentimes they were ceremonially unclean, and so then they needed to stay away from them because I don't want to be unclean, and you're unclean, so I don't want to get near you. I don't want to touch you. I'm going to stay away from you. Yet at the same time, and the interesting thing about God's choice is they were the ones that watched over the goats, and they were the ones that watched over the sheep. And many would rely on these shepherds for their Passover lambs. The lambs that they needed, that needed to be unblemished, that they were able to sacrifice on the Passover occasion. That reminded them of the time of the Exodus when God said, when I see the blood, I will what? Pass over you. And so the shepherds were an important reflection of what was to happen. God chose the less privileged, perhaps the poor ones, Yet the ones who knew the importance of taking care of their flock, the ones that would be responsible. The day would come, and we'll put this scripture up on the screen, the day would come when, when Jesus would make that clear connection. It was found in John chapter 10, verses 7 through 15, where Jesus said, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever come before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He and she will go, come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. God chose shepherds because he's a shepherd. God chose those that everyone avoids because they would avoid him. God chose shepherds because they were the ones that could usher in the recognition of the Passover lamb. Now try to put yourself in that night. Like I said, probably an April night in, in Israel. It was most likely a quiet night with the, sand, the, the sound perhaps of the occasional bleating of the sheep. And while the shepherds were, were probably trying to stay alert to the danger that might be around the wolves and things like that, as, as Jesus said, would later say, the sheep really weren't their priority. They might have been around the fire talking uh, okay, you know, we're paid to take care of these sheep because the people that own the sheep have a lot of money and they don't want to be despicable like we. And while they were there and watching over their flock, suddenly the sky lights up with an angel reflecting the glory of God. That is so hard for us to grasp because we, we just, we just, we don't, we don't really have an understanding of what it means to see angels. If you, if you look at some of the Old Testament, the, range, the uh, references to angels, they're pretty scary at times. Was, was the angel there, the, the, the typical picture that we see of this flowing hair and white gown and angel wings, or, or was it like some of the Old Testament depictions? We don't know. But the scripture tells us they were terrified. <laughs> it was something you don't see every day. And that fear must have been intense. If they recognized at first that it was the glory of God, then they might have thought, I'm dead. Because no one sees the glory of God and lives to talk about it. <laughs> Admittedly, I wonder, how did the sheep respond? <laughs> sheep can be pretty skittish. And dumb. <laughs> how, how did they respond? Did they scatter? 
or did God miraculously keep them together? But in all that fear, the, the shepherds were offered peace. Don't be afraid. I got something great to tell you. The ones who people avoided were the ones that God approached. And sometimes we get high and on our own mighty horse or our own pedestal and think, boy, why, why were we privileged? God, God chose me. <laughs> God chose all of us. But not all would receive him. Not all would accept that message. The, the shepherds did. The, the shepherds responded. The shepherds obeyed. And too often in this world, we hear, but we don't obey. Oh, that, that was something else. Oh, that was just me. You know, God doesn't want me to step out in faith. But, but the shepherds were ready to do what they were told. And then in a way, God, through the voice of the angel, gave them permission to, to leave the sheep. Or, or, or perhaps, the scripture doesn't tell us, perhaps they brought the sheep. We, we don't know. Can you imagine how those shepherds felt? Not only about the appearance of the angels, and it says the, the, the host of angels joined the angel that gave the announcement, and they're singing glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill to those on whom his favor rests. But when they were told what exactly was going to happen, and then when they went there, they saw that it happened exactly as they were told. <laughs> wow! You know, we, we, we didn't know if maybe we had had some bad food. <laughs> but we obeyed and, and we went. And the angel told us that we're going to find this baby in a place we didn't expect, in a manger that we wouldn't expect the baby to be in. And so I think the important message here for us when we consider the angels is do we do as the shepherds did? After they saw the Christ child, what did they do? Did they go to seminary? <laughs> did they change their profession? Did they go about their work as if nothing ever happened? There was no change whatsoever? Wow, that was a pretty incredible night. Let's do something else tomorrow. No, we're, we're told, according to the scripture that we read, that when they had seen him, when they saw the Christ child, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. This is good news. We've been told that the, the Messiah is coming. We have been waiting for the Messiah. We have been waiting for the redemption. Remember, as we've talked about before, in the shepherd's mind and most Jewish people at the time, they thought the Messiah was going to be one that was going to free them from the bondage of Rome. It was going to be a conquering general, not a lowly child born in a manger without pomp and circumstance. The shepherd's encounter with the angel and then their encounter with Jesus Christ they were changed. Their lives would never be the same. They were encouraged because they saw the promise that had been foretold by the prophets long ago. And now they went on to all those who would ignore them to proclaim what they saw and what they heard. They were probably still avoided. As they probably approached people, they probably kind of said, okay, back up. <laughs> And they, they proclaimed it probably as loud as they could. And they told the good news that a Savior had been born. And let us tell you about what God told us and, and how he told us. And this amazing sight we saw in the field where there wasn't a lot of people around. There was no paparazzi. <laughs> and, and what we saw made us tremble. Because the shepherds were the ones that got that first announcement. The shepherds who... Jesus would reflect later that he is the good shepherd. The ones got that message. 
when you heard the good news, when you came to Christ, when you recognized that he died for your sins, did your life change? It doesn't mean you're perfect, by the way. It is a process. It's in the scriptures we call it sanctification. This, this process of growth that, that, that God takes off the rough edges, that he helps us to see the things that we have done in the past that we shouldn't do in the future. And I, I always say to people, if you've put your faith in Christ, can you look back and say, oh, this has changed, this has changed, this has changed. If, if, if nothing has changed, then I would ask you to really get on your knees and say, Lord, <laughs> change me. Make me more like you. And all of us fall short. The shepherds were changed. We're not told in the scriptures we read, we're not told much about Joseph's reaction. Joseph is, is, is such a side story. And, and people speculate, well, he must have died early. We don't know that. The, the point of the scriptures was it wasn't about Joseph, and quite frankly, it wasn't about Mary. <laughs> it was about the birth of the Messiah. Mary, who had just delivered the baby. And, and um, you know, I'm a man, so I can't, I, I've been there for the birth of all my kids. Matter of fact, I almost had to catch one of them because <laughs> the doctor wasn't there in time. And I'm amazed at, but my wife went through a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of screaming and pain and don't you ever touch me again. <laughs> and Mary, who wasn't in this nice, cozy hospital room with all sorts of care was in probably kind of dirty surroundings because the animals have to do their thing and there was no okay let's wait till later and she was probably relieved and joyful with the baby's birth as all mothers are after they go through that when they see the baby it's kind of like all the rest is forgotten but the scripture says that she pondered in her heart all that she had seen and heard. She probably reflected back to those nine months earlier when the angel approached her with her assignment. The, the time that she spent with her cousin Elizabeth, who was to have the, the child that was, became John the Baptist. The, the baby that leaped for joy in Elizabeth's womb when she heard Mary's voice. She, she probably thought about that long journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem and probably thought, you know what, it was all worth it. Most likely, she was overwhelmed. And quite frankly, we find out later in the New Testament scriptures, there was a time where she doubted where she thought that maybe her son Jesus was a little off because he wasn't getting rest, he wasn't getting food. That's like us. We, we come to that place where we recognize Jesus Christ in our life and then the world gets busy and things happen and we start to forget the great news of great joy which will be to all people for unto us a Savior is born who is Christ the Lord. Let's pray. Almighty God, I pray that you'll help us to reflect not just on Christmas Day but each day of what you have done in this world and in our lives. And Lord, that we might know you that we might ponder in our hearts all that you have done and all that you're going to do. Lord, we recognize that the day will come when we will stand before you. The day will come when you come again. Not in a lowly stable, not in a manger, but in glory. And every eye will see him and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. We thank you, Lord. We love you. We pray that you'll watch over us and help us to proclaim the good news. For these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
We're going to close today with two songs. So please, if you're able, please stand as we sing. Like the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Like the herald angels sing, glory to the new.
wonderful Christmas with friends and family, wherever you might be. But Almighty God, I pray that you'll help us to leave this place changed, that we might proclaim to those around us in gentleness and respect that Jesus Christ was born, did live, died, was buried. But on the third day, he rose again, and he sits on the throne. And Almighty God, with him on the throne, with you on the throne, we have nothing to fear because you are with us. We thank you for this day. I pray that you'll bless each person here. Watch over them as they travel and guide them in all that they do. We pray this together in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great rest of your day. Merry Christmas. <laughs>